Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. As is well known, due to changes in the external environment, chip foundries such as TSMC and Samsung have lost the power to freely ship their products to the outside world. At the same time, in order to further monopolize the high-end chip industry chain, the United States has gone so far as to reach a so-called trilateral agreement with Japan and the Netherlands to restrict the export of high-end semiconductor equipment to China. The objective is clear, to curb technological breakthroughs by Chinese companies in the field of advanced chips by further restricting the export of semiconductor equipment. However, a scenario that the US did not want to see has ultimately unfolded. Under the persistent development of China's chip industry, ASML CEO Christophe Fouquet has publicly contradicted the US. According to reports, in an interview with Bloomberg on December 12, ASML CEO Christophe Fouquet explicitly stated that technology should be exported to China in moderation to prevent it from developing its own competitive capabilities. This can be seen as a public contradiction of the US chip control strategy. It's important to understand that the chip control rules formulated by the US are not only intended to cut off the supply of high-end equipment from foreign companies to Chinese companies, but also to systematically curb the development of China's chip industry. From their perspective, once Chinese companies obtain enough chip equipment, they will threaten the US's technological dominance. Therefore, even for equipment that China already possesses, the US will still impose export controls. This is the case with the DUV lithography machines produced by ASML. After the introduction of the new US regulations, many lithography machines that could previously be sold to the Chinese market can no longer be delivered to Chinese companies due to the restrictions. Furthermore, Fouquet also believes that the West can maintain China's dependence on Western technology and slow down the pace of China's independent technological progress by refusing to provide China with the latest and best products. While this view still acknowledges the US restriction strategy, it differs significantly from the US in terms of the types and products of equipment to be restricted. The concept of refusing to sell the latest and best products is difficult to define in the market. This has led some to believe that ASML's CEO is trying to secure the right to deliver EUV lithography systems to Chinese companies. Currently, some high-end DUV lithography systems can be independently manufactured using domestic Chinese technology. Only a very small number of components need to be imported. To maintain its competitive advantage, ASML must consider lifting restrictions on more advanced equipment for the Chinese mainland. Furthermore, ASML had previously released a more advanced NAEUV lithography machine. The responsibility of maintaining a leading position in the Chinese market naturally fell on some older models of EUV lithography equipment. As a result, the situation that the US did not want to see has already begun to unfold. Fouquet's statement also has an important contextual background. US President Trump recently announced the lifting of restrictions on the sale of H200 chips to China. It's worth noting that during NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang's long-term lobbying of the US government, a key theoretical argument was, restricting China is equivalent to allowing China to become self-sufficient and stronger. Only by gaining market share and making Chinese companies dependent on NVIDIA chips can NVIDIA maintain its monopoly and ensure the US's leading position. Fouquet's statement uses similar reasoning, as long as China obtains older equipment and ASML captures sufficient market share, it will slow down the progress of Chinese companies. This argument is indeed feasible, but only if the Chinese government and companies fully cooperate. However, the reality is that years of technological blockade by the US and the West have made Chinese companies understand the situation clearly. 
The lukewarm response in the domestic market, after the lifting of restrictions on NVIDIA's H200 chips confirms this. Regarding imported chips or semiconductor equipment, China will utilize them as much as possible. As for using these things to monopolize the Chinese market and restrict the development of local Chinese companies, that's simply wishful thinking on their part. As for Fouquet's statement, the only useful part, in my opinion, is the sentence, China might export these products back to us. From semiconductor equipment to AI chips, China already has an independent and relatively complete industrial chain. The consequence of the US and Europe continuing sanctions is that China will produce more cost-effective products and export them overseas to seize market share. Quantitative change leads to qualitative change, it only takes time. The US chip control strategy was doomed to fail from the moment China decided to build its own independent industrial chain. It took 12 years from the exposure of ASML's first prototype to commercial mass production. Even if Chinese companies develop slowly, it will only take about 15 years. Now, six years have passed since the US imposed chip restrictions, and many critical semiconductor equipment components have already been replaced by domestically produced alternatives. Chinese companies have gone from nothing to something in less than five years, and what will happen in the next five years, and the five years after that, is self-evident. It's certain that, following the typical development pattern of Chinese manufacturing, lithography machines and high-end chips will become incredibly cheap in another 10 years or so. From NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang's appeals to ASML CEO Peter Wenning's public counterarguments. In October, the French newspaper Le Monde published an article pointing out that, facing bottlenecks in lithography technology development, Chinese companies are redoubling their efforts to achieve self-sufficiency. With national strategic support, Chinese companies have set ambitious goals, planning to control nearly one-third of global wafer foundry capacity by 2030. Market demand is relatively stable, and what it means for the West if China takes one-third of the global wafer capacity is self-evident. At this juncture, embracing the Chinese market is embracing the future, and perhaps this is the core reason why NVIDIA and ASML executives have successively spoken out about the Chinese market. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to leave comments and discuss.